So my project, um, it's called the Farm School Project, and the goal of it is to bring a school garden and um, a relationship with a local farmer, so to bring local produce into the school cafeteria at Brooks Elementary School in Medford. It's a school that I tutor at with a tough literacy school. In it. Um, okay, so there, the problem, this is like a problem, problem at large. There's rising rates in diet-related obesity, heart disease, 16% of children ages 6 to 19 are obese and this rate is rising, it's tripled since 1980. Climate change, environmental degradation, 2.5% annual increase in carbon emissions since 2000. And then also in math and science in the US, you, um, children are lag lagging behind their counterparts. Um, the rate 29 out of 57 in comparison to other developing nations. So um, meanwhile, at Brooks Elementary, within a 100 mile radius, there are a bunch of farms that, um, that grow locally grown produce and produce milk and dairy and locally grown poultry. So um, what kind of disconnect? So this is the problem at Brooks Elementary. So the cafeteria serves very few fruits and vegetables, and they're served in an unappealing way. Like, like I, like I was there once, and I overheard one of the teachers say, like, you can't get a brownie unless you eat your carrots first. So like, I don't know. If I, if I was a kid, I wouldn't want to eat carrots. I would never volunteer to eat carrots if it was presented to me in that way. So um, also, they get their food from a lot of large food distrib distributors which doesn't really make sense when there are so many farms in the area that are willing and have the capacity to provide them with food. And it wouldn't be that much more expensive. Um, so, um, so the project is a creation of a school garden um, that would incorporate science and math education, humanities education. It's amazing how much of the classroom, um, how much learning is applicable to gardens. Um, for example, not only science, talking about photosynthesis, but also humanities-wise, like on um, like planting a Shakespeare garden, or like, for example, like finding out like the Latin derivation of names of like different plants, and and math like measuring plot size and and like how big a zucchini is, and like just different sorts of activities that apply to gardens, and it allows for hands-on learning, um, which is really effective. And for children, because like sitting in a classroom all day, kids, especially in elementary school, get really restless. So, um, yeah, so school gardens are a really good way. And I volunteered at a bunch of school gardens, and the kids are just so excited to go outside. Like, whenever the teacher says time's up, they always say, oh no, five more minutes, five more minutes. So, I, I think gardens like are such a great way. Um, and so, also, there would be a, an accompanying awareness campaign. Um, and this would include like posters and signs and the cafeteria talking about the farm, where the produce comes from, and the type of products, like where, where it originally was grown. And um, one of the farmers that I met with for this project, John Lee of Allendale Farm, he agreed to come in and do a presentation to the school um, about like what he does and, and like if we could arrange a field trip to the farm. So just sort of like an interactive program explaining about like, sustainability and the importance of like fostering a sense of mindfulness about where food comes from. Um, so yeah, just some of the goals. Um, so supporting sustainable agriculture, minimizing our carbon footprint, improving the health of our youth, um, adding a hands-on component to education, and fostering a sense of mindfulness, and, and um, nurturing awareness about the importance of nutrition. Um, and so these are just like a list of a few of my collaborators. Um, Cindy Crow is the director of the Tufts Literacy Corps, and she's my boss there. She's also a Brooks parent. She's a parent at Brooks, and um, she agreed to send out an email to the entire PTO with like my project proposal. And then that night, I got like over 25 emails saying, like, I'm really interested in this project. How do I get involved? So she's a really good contact to have. Um, and then Karen Johnson, I agreed to meet with her. She's she's head of the Brooks Elementary Enrichment Committee and parent and um, and parent at the school. So she's able to like be be a force. She's like an advocate for this project in the PTO and in the enrichment committee. Um, Dean Irwin is director of food services at Brooks Elementary, and Chef Bridget Collins, she's the overseer of sustainable efforts in Medford, all the elementary schools. And they were both really excited about the project and 
they said that they have, they don't have a huge budget, but they have some flexibility in terms of being able to divert some of their money that they would normally spend on big distributors, being able to buy it from a local, um, a local farm. Um, so, and also, in her previous job, Karen Johnston wrote grant proposals for a nonprofit. And um, so I guess I, I drew on Clues and Posner's idea of, um, of searching for opportunities. And I asked her if she would be willing to like, look for grants and to buy some sort of grant proposal. And she was really excited about that. Um, and, and also, like, I found Clues and Posner, leaders enable other ways to act, not by avoiding their power they have, but by giving it away. So um, I, 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 gave her, I delegated that responsibility, the responsibility of grant writing to Karen Johnson. Um, and also, another thing she did was she helped organize a subcommittee of parents on the PTO who are dedicated to bringing this program to support the elementary. And then some more, um, these, this is, these are my collaborators so far. Um, I still have some more in the works, but Hi, Dean. She's also an alum, and she was a former Tisch scholar at Tufts. Um, she's a garden coordinator for Brownwood Somerville. And they have, and Somerville has seven gardens at all of their elementary schools. Um, so she oversees all of their gardens. And she gave me really helpful advice on, like, testing heavy metals and just, like, the steps that you have to go through before starting the garden. Um, Clayton Chapman, he's a garden club leader for gardens at Brownwood Somerville. And he leads an after school program at Kennedy Elementary School. And it was really cool. I went and like all the kids they showed me there's like the char that was growing. It's like I've never seen little kids be excited about char because they were. And um, Jericho Bicknell, she um, is an education and outreach coordinator for Waltham Field Community Farm in Waltham. And they have a learning garden besides the like in addition to their like working farm. So this learning garden has summer programs and after school programs. So like, the, so like, they don't have to worry about kids stepping on the bed because it's just entirely for them. Um, and John Lee, a general manager at Allendale Farm, and um, he was the one who we're talking with, like fostering relationships with and getting their products into the Medford cafeteria. Um, okay, so these are just a few of the leadership traits that I learned and I tried to apply. Um, so, enabling others to act. Um, so, with Karen Johnson, I tried, oh, there's someone from Brown Stone, but we were So, she, she's, um, so Karen Johnson, or, so, okay, so, um, I enabled her to act by, um, by helping write grants and organizing the subcommittee. Um, and also, um, team leadership. I tried to find team leadership approach. This is actually Ty's suggestion to make a list of collaborators and um, and and next to their names, write the contributions and their commitments. So that way, by dividing the task into smaller, more manageable commitments, people are more likely to deliver and follow through. Um, and another thing was adaptive work. Um, so in my meeting with the head of food services. Um, she talked about how at the high school they have this courtyard with underground plumbing that in the high school is pretty close by that would be perfect for a garden. So I had always imagined this plot of land at first. It was pretty small, but um, I thought we could get started with it. That would be used for the garden. But then she mentioned in the high school how they have this place that would be ideal. So I kind of shifted my thinking and applied high and similar um, principles of adaptive work to improve upon my pre existing plan. Um, and then these are just like some next steps. Um, so secure funding from the garden through grant grants and school fundraisers and petitioning the PTO, um, collaborating with director of food services and the subcommittee of books parents um, to create a menu for the fall 2010. And, um, and continuing to draw expertise with my collaborators and, and then the long term goal will be creating a model for other schools and mentors. So, yeah, and just to end, there's one quote I found in this book on urban gardening. Um, For children to work outdoors with their feet in the soil, their heads in the sunshine, and their lungs filled with fresh air is good for them physically. To learn something that may contribute toward their support is good for them morally. To have contact with the soil, with the fundamental forces of nature, and with plant and animal life is highly educated in itself and furnishes 
raw material of the very best kind for the work of the school. And that was said by the philanthropy class in the U.S. Bureau of Education, which I remember from my teaching. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah.